Hello and welcome back to the second part of this video. Now, in the first part, we were trying to look at how we came about with these reinforcements. That we have a main reinforcement bar in parallel to the length of the shorter side. So we have the length of the shorter side to be 4 meters while the length of the longer side to be 5 meters. So we also talked about the role of this callback. This reinforcement bar was returned because the portion here is discontinuous. And so there is a need for bonding to occur. And then, uh, well, you understand better if you study your bonds and anchorage. So the this bar returning is meant to play the role of a top bar. So it caters for any of the forces or moments that may be introduced around the supports. Now, what this means is that if, for instance, we have from your design that it from uh, based on the codes and the area of reinforcement that the designer is to provide high yield steel bars with diameters of 12 mm and placed at 250 center to center so what that means is that we are going to have the, there's going to be reinforcements like just like this which will be placed in parallel to the length of the shorter side and then it will be placed along these points from the beginning to the end here now what this means is that if we are going to have the lengths what it means is that we are going to find how many reinforcement bars are we going to place from here to here if it is having a spacing of 250 mm center to center so what this means is that we have to divide the total length of this to give us about 20 of it so it means that there'll be spacing of about 20 reinforcement bars from this point to this point and we will need to introduce a way of identifying it because we cannot place all the 20 bars here but what we can do is that we can introduce a call out we can introduce a call out now what we are trying to say here is that i can introduce another line let's take from here and then bring it out now let's introduce a a new layer for that so let's let's call it call out and let's use another color to indicate so let's use something like this so what this means is that i can always um, click and then introduce the call out and so that takes the color so we can easily identify this now the next step is that we will need to introduce a circle here a point more like a pin which will let us understand that which will let us understand that this reinforcement bar, the information that is attached to it is perpendicularly called out this way. So let's introduce a, let's hatch. So let's, um, we didn't give in a, a color for hatching, but let's introduce this. We can always work on that later. So what that means is that this reinforcement is covering this part. So we are going to use our, let's introduce text. 
so that we'll be able to do our write up. So let's introduce text. And let's use, let's assume we are going to use something lighter. Let's see, um, let's see this. So, so what this means is that we're going to have 20 numbers of high yield steel mm bars which have a diameter of 12 mm and they'll be placed at 250 mm center to center bottom so let's introduce a text here so what this means is that we are going to start by um, let's place Let's use a height of, let's say, 250. And uh, zero as the angle. So what this means is that we are going to have 20, sorry, let's introduce, I mean, when we finish, we'll introduce the layer. So 20 Y 12. Now, there's also something else we need to know about, and it is called the bar mark. So this helps us to identify all the reinforcement bars. This is why when we have a schedule, so that we will know the orientation, the size, and all that, and other information that can help us, especially when trying to cost the uh, reinforcements. Now, we can introduce as the first one as 0, 1. So that's the bar mark. Now, remember, we said at 250, center to center. Now, remember I said that it's a main reinforcement bar. So it's at the bottom. But remember, there's also another reinforcement bar, which will be placed perpendicular to it. So we can take this as the bottom bottom and then we click enter and we are good to go i want to move this uh, reinforcement bar so that this information will not be obscured so we'll go to the move command and then i'll click on the object i press enter and then i pick a, uh, a base point and uh, i can always move and this is what we have so what this means is that we have this reinforcement bar so if you are going to the site it means that there is going to be 20 of these placed at 250 mm center to center at the bottom so what this means is that anybody at the site will understand the code or the language that is being spoken so that adequate uh, you know uh, provisions are made on site so let's let's change the let's change the layer to cover for text. So now what this means again is that we have played our role by um, introducing the reinforcement bar in parallel to the length of the shorter side. So what about the longer side? So we're also going to introduce a main reinforcement bar spanning this way so what this means is that i'm going to use the polyline and start from somewhere around here so let's put it here and i will draw And then I will try to introduce the callback. So let's assume that we're having about, um, let's see, 1650. And then press enter. So don't forget, this is also, let's see if we have distribution bars. I can introduce distribution bars as this so that 